Hello, thank you for joining me on this lovely spring evening. I'm just walking along the old A413 in Chalfont St Peter in Buckinghamshire. Now this video, this is the first episode of um, a new series that we're going to do from time to time. As I travel around the country making various other videos, um, I thought this would be one that will fit in nicely in between the various other videos I make now. Most of the videos I make are about railways, but I also do quite a lot of videos which are nothing to do with railways. And I know a lot of my followers like the railway videos, but I've also got quite a lot of followers who aren't so interested in railways, but they do like the other videos, such as rivers, castles, um, churches, etc. So I thought, um, let's get the A413 now, I thought, what if I could come up with a series which is as much about railways as it's not about railways? And that's what this video is the first of. This series is going to be called the largest town in the county without a railway station. Now, um, we're in Chalfont St Peter, so there's probably someone getting ready to write a comment now. Said so, Chalfont St Peter's not the largest town in Buckinghamshire without a railway station. It's not even a town, it's a village. And, um, be absolutely right. Chalfont St Peter is a village, not a town. And, um, it's not the largest settlement in Buckinghamshire without a railway station. So, you're probably thinking, well, why am I starting it here? in Chalfont St Peter? Well, the answer is my hometown. It's fairly large. It's about 12,700. It hasn't got a railway station. And um, I just thought we'd use this as, like I said, it's the first episode, the pilot episode, to explain the concept of this series. So um, my plan is, as I travel around the country, side doing, you know, the miniature railway videos, visiting heritage railways or visiting castles and follies, following rivers etc um you know i will visit some of these large towns that don't have a railway station now i'm someone who some of the time i drive to places most of the time lately i've driven pretty much everywhere because of the pandemic i've not been on a lot of tra public transport but i am someone who does also like to leave my car at home and go by public transport preferably by train so what i thought we'd do is look at all these largest towns in each county that don't have a railway station and sort of see how easy it is to get to a railway station. Um, I've had experiences of living in fairly large towns. It's strange, you think being the person I am who likes railways, the only large, the only town I've ever lived in that's actually got a railway station is Shrewsbury. I've lived in Newport and Shropshire, 20,000 odd, not got a railway station. I've lived in Leek, Staffordshire, again 20,000 people, no railway station and that one that was where I had some, on the whole, it, the buses were fine, but there was a couple of times you're trying to get back from Stoke-on-Trent, you'd have to get two buses, you might have a two hour long wait at Hanley bus station, and on a Sunday, the buses from Hanley to Leek finished at about five o'clock, so if ever, say, came down here, I had the worry that I had to be back for five o'clock or get a taxi. So sometimes, if you live in these large towns that don't have a railway station, you don't want to take your car, life isn't always that easy to get about. So that's why I thought it'd be an interesting thing to look at. To so look at each of these largest towns and um, see what the public transport is like. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're just going to do it with Chalfont St Peter, look at what options you've got for railway stations and how you can get to them if you, say, don't have access to a car or can't get a lift at the appropriate time. Um, so I've, I've researched every county in the UK and there's some interesting ones um, as to what their largest town is without a railway station. I'm not going to go through them all now, but some of these largest towns without a railway station have a railway presence. Some it might just be a miniature railway. So as I'm also visiting every miniature railway in Britain, then I'll certainly be going to those towns. So I could do another episode while I'm there on how the town is without a railway station. Some of these largest towns, at least two I can think of, have a heritage railway station. That's another town I've lived in. I did live in Bridge North at one point, and it was really nice having the Seven Valley Railway. But as nice as it was, it, you know, it didn't run a service all the time. So um, I was kind of reliant on buses and driving. I'm just crossing the um, River Misbourne here. I have done a series of videos on the River Misbourne. So if you have a look at link on screen now, you'll be able to see one of those videos. Um, so, as I'm saying, it's not always easy. Um, if you do live in one of these towns that has, hasn't got a railway station, I've had um, 
a look, there's one county where every town has a railway station and the largest um, settlement without a railway station is a village. It's smaller than Chalfont St Peter, but um, it's a village. So that's another interesting one. Chalfont St Peter, it's a village. It's not the largest village in England without a railway station, but it certainly is the largest village in Buckinghamshire without a railway station. And it's the third largest settlement in Buckinghamshire without a railway station. The other two, um, it's an interesting one, because which one I will do... I think I'm just going to have to do both of them. Buckinghamshire was the most complicated county, because most counties had an, a really obvious largest town which didn't have a railway station. But with Buckinghamshire it was a bit complicated, because the two contenders... If you count, if Chavels of Peter comes in third place as a large village, which is a bit like a town. Um, the other two were Buckingham and Newport Pagnell. Now, Newport Pagnell's the larger one, but the problem with Newport Pagnell is it's in the borough of Milton Keynes. So technically, it's kind of a suburb of a modern city, but for the sake of it being an old town, I think it deserves a it deserves the uh, title of the largest town in the county without a railway station but then as it is a suburb of Milton Keynes then Buckingham becomes the largest town in Buckinghamshire without a railway station that's not a suburb of anywhere else so we will have to do videos at some point on them they won't necessarily be next I'm just gonna as I said slowly work my way around the country as I do various other visits and visit some of these larger towns some large towns though have a railway passing through them and of this example and it probably was the largest town in Warwickshire without railway station, um, was Kenilworth. I have been to Kenilworth um, in the past. Um, in fact, I even visited the station, if you have a look at Lincoln's screen now, because Kenilworth had a railway passing through it. Um, you know, a train's running from between Manchester and Bournemouth passing through it, but it didn't have a railway station, which must have been very frustrating for the 30,000 residents there. But thankfully, it now does have... Um, a railway station. Another one I can think of, although much smaller, is Soham, um, up in Cambridgeshire. That has a railway passing through. It's due to get a railway. The other interesting thing is most of these largest towns, which didn't, which don't currently have a railway station, have had one once. I can think of one, one of them, um, that had about 100,000 people on my list of each county without a railway station. Has never had one, but Chalfons of Peter has never ever had a railway station. So what we're going to do, as we um, approach the village centre, we're going to have a look at where you'd get a bus if you want to go to a railway station. Have a look at, um, you know, where would be the best one to get to. Now, as someone who lives here, I, nine, well, hmm, how, I'm trying to think which one I do use most, probably Giles Cross, but sometimes I do use Chalfont Latimer. But if you wanted to use Chalfont Latimer, and you can only go by public transport. There's no buses there, so I have to drive to Chalfont and Latimer. So that's a bit complicated. There's a parish church there. So um, I would tend to use Giles Cross if I'm going to London, and certainly if I'm going up north. But I do use Chalfont and Latimer if I'm going on a rail tour out of Euston or another London terminal. I really early in the morning when um, Chiltern Railways don't run an early enough train. I have quite often got the first train at about um, quarter past five off Chalfont and Latimer. I've done that quite a few times. So I do use Chalfont and Latimer from time to time. Occasionally I've gone to Slough both by bus and driven. Um, probably the furthest away I've ever driven from Chalfont to Peter for a supposed um, most appropriate local station was Ashford International when I went to Disneyland Paris, but that's a bit like going to an airport because you don't normally go to your nearest airfield. Imagine that, if every time I went on holiday I went to Denham and could fly from Denham Airfield to anywhere, that would be um, quite unusual, but um, obviously I don't do that. I've never actually flown out of Denham Airfield. So, here is the centre of Chalfons and Peter. So chances are, if you live in Chalfons and Peter and you want to get to a railway station, and um, you don't have access to a car, you're probably going to come here. Now, this bus stop here, this is where buses go in the, um, towards Amersham. Where do they go? I haven't been on the bus for a while. To, yeah, to Amersham, High Wycombe and Chesham. So, I think for High Wycombe, it's on the, same, on the short main line, like Giles Cross, so you probably would go um, on that side of the road, get a bus there to Giles Cross. But, as I said, if you wanted the Met, you could go to Amersham. Um, Chesham, that's an interesting one. That brings me on to another um, thing with regarding largest towns without a railway station. 
I've said if they have a heritage railway, they could still be the largest town because they don't have that seven day a week service. But if they've got a metro or tram stop, so a couple of obvious ones, Chesham is an obvious one. Chesham is, would, if Chesham didn't have the Metropolitan Line, Chesham would undoubtedly be the largest town in Buckinghamshire without a railway station, but it's got the Metropolitan Line. So um, we won't count Chesham in that one. Another obvious one I can think of is in what would be the largest town in Nottinghamshire without a railway station. That's West Bridgeford, but there's at least three stops on the... Um, Nottingham tram network so West Bridgeford and Chesham for those reasons they're on metro stroke tram networks so they don't qualify here you can get a bus to um, Amersham no sorry over there you get a bus to Amersham you can get a bus to Gerrard's Cross so that's the most obvious railway station you can also get a bus to Uxbridge but as Uxbridge is another branch of the Met then um, really you might as well have gone to Amersham but I suppose you could go to Uxbridge in fact, I do remember when I was little once, uh, my dad and I, we, went, we went, went to Harrow once. We went on a bus from here and then we to Uxbridge and we went on the Metropolitan Line to Rainers Lane and then we got the Piccadilly Line to South Harrow. So I have, um, I have used buses from a very early age to get to a railway station. So if you get on a bus, it'll take you up here towards Giles Cross. So... What my plan is, when I do each of these videos, um, when, when I go to various other towns around the countryside, which qualifies as the largest without a railway station, the idea is I'll have a little look around the town. Most of them, there'll probably be an old railway station to go and have a look at, so we will do that. As I said, there never was a railway in Chalvin St Peter, so we can't go and look for an old railway station. And then I would look for, or ideally go to the nearest railway station. Now, regarding the Covid pandemic, as things get back to normal, my plan is perhaps to travel on the buses um, and perhaps get to some of these largest towns by train. Um, so if I was to go by train, say, to one of them and then get a bus, make my way all the way um, by public transport to some of these largest towns. But in, in this case, um, I'm going to walk up to Jarge Cross Basically, I'm not going to quite follow the bus route. I'm going to take a shortcut. But in some cases, I may say, visit this largest town without a railway station, then just drive. Basically, the route the bus will take to the nearest station. As I said, it doesn't necessarily mean the nearest station to these largest towns is necessarily the most appropriate station because um, sometimes the nearest station might not have that many trains a day. And there might be one slightly further away that has a lot more trains a day. The other thing I wanted to touch on, um, in case anyone, sometimes there's people who know of Chalfont St Peter, know of Chalfont St Giles, they know there's a station on the Metropolitan Line called Chalfont Latimer, but they don't really know the area, and they just assume that Chalfont is some big town in Buckinghamshire that has a railway station. So to answer that question, anyone who's wondering that, Chalfont Latimer is not Chalfont St Peter station. What happened when they built the Metro Metropolitan Line there was literally nothing where Chalfont and Latimer was. I have also done a video on that so if you do have a look at link on screen now you can watch that video. Before the Metropolitan Line there was nothing where Chalfont and Latimer was but they built a station there because it was in the top corner of the parish of Chalfont St Giles. So they built a station there in Chalfont St Giles um, but it wasn't really that close to Chalfont St Giles and it was just as close to Latimer so they decided to call it Chalfont and Latimer, and then eventually the village of Little Chalfont grew up around Chalfont Latimer. So that how that, that's how that came to be. So Chalfont Latimer station is in Little Chalfont, it's not in Chalfont St Peter or Chalfont St Giles. And as I said, there's no direct bus there, so um, unless you want to drive, it's probably not the station you're going to use. By the way, the bus would go up right around there. I'm taking a shortcut up Gold Hill Common. I'll rejoin the bus route further up. I'm not going to talk all the way to Charles Cross. Um, so, that explains that. Oh, and as for, um, there is railway in Chalfont St Peter, because the Chilton Main Line, which I've mentioned at Charles Cross, it does cut through the parish of Chalfont St Peter, but they never built a station there. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue on up. I'll show you when I rejoin the bus route, exactly where I mean. And then eventually I'm just going to keep on walking all the way along the top of Gold Hill, uh, cross Austin will come to Charles Cross. Well, here I am at the top of Gold Hill Common. So the bus 
would have gone right up there around um, that end of Chalfont St Peter latest green and along top of the common and then it continues past Gold Hill Baptist Church on towards Gerald's Cross. So um, if you lived in this part of Chalfont St Peter you'd probably get on the bus just over there to go to Gerald's Cross or you could walk. I mean I quite often walk from Chalfont St Peter to Gerald's Cross. That said I probably wouldn't do it if I have luggage um, although I have in the odd time I have walked back from Giles Cross Station with luggage but obviously I prefer not to um, when I walk to Giles Cross Station I would normally go down this road here and go through a series of footpaths and alleyways but um, today I'm, as I said I'm walking the bus route so I'm going to continue on along here past St Joseph's Church and uh, across Austin will come and and over into Giles Cross now. Another thing um, I'll point out is, as I said, the idea of this series is when we go to these largest towns in the county of that railway station, is to have a look around. I'll show you a bit of the history of them. The reason I haven't done that which, with Chalfont St Peter is because I've already done loads and loads of videos in Chalfont St Peter because, as I said, it's my hometown, so naturally it's somewhere you're going to make videos on. So, um, I mean, have a look at Link on screen now. You can see one of them. Um, one of the videos I did make in Chalfont St Peter, looking at the history. Um, I'm going to continue on now through this residential area until we get to Giles Cross and where you would get off the bus to get a train. I'm just continuing on towards Giles Cross. Just want to show you this little bit here. St Joseph's Catholic Church. Um, and then we have Austinwood Common. I just thought I'd show you this bit because when I did do my little series of videos around Chalmers and Peter, um, I never actually featured these. I'd like to one day do a video inside the church and um, show you more of the church. That's perhaps why I didn't feature these, but that is the newer part of the church. It was once a very small Catholic chapel, um, which we're about to see. See, see what it's here, that, if you look at old pictures, it's only that, just a small Catholic chapel. And then they built that huge extension. Um, so we are now crossing School Lane. Another thing I will um, take the opportunity to mention, seeing as we're here, is often when you're going to travel, you know, on a bus, say from a largest town in the county of our railway station to um, wherever the nearest railway station happens to be, or as I said earlier, might not necessarily be the nearest, but the station you're going to, you'll probably travel through, you know, um, countryside. Well, Chalfont St Peter and Jarge Cross are kind of one conurbation now, but they have got Austinwood Common in the middle, which is um, a nice bit of rural Buckinghamshire showing us how, um, you know, the whole area would be. So I'm actually going to leave the road for a moment and just take you this way because it's more scenic and um, attractive. This is Austinwood Common. Played here a lot as a child. Always enjoyed coming here over the years. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what rural Buckinghamshire would have been like because really there was no Gerard Cross before the Chilton Main Line um, was built. There was only Chalfont St Peter and then they just happened to build a railway station at Gerard Cross um, which was only a hamlet and now Gerard Cross has grown and um, like I said they are sort of one but they're not one. Um, this is a really nice bit I think. always like this rural cottage here just seemingly in the middle of nowhere and it's quite nice because it's in the middle of nowhere but you could live here knowing that you're not in the middle of nowhere and um, we're not quite into Giles Cross yet what I'm going to do I'm now going to go back through here rejoin the main road and um, continue eventually to Giles Cross well here we are it's um, starting to get dark now but we've arrived in Gerald's Cross along the route that the bus would take you. As I mentioned back there, if I was to walk to Gerald's Cross, I probably wouldn't come this way. Let's go across the road actually while well, it's quieter. E Fort Hotel. If times were normal, I'd probably go and have a pint in there after finish making this video, but I can't. Um, so just have to walk home and have a cup of tea. Anyway, Gerald's Cross. A town 
funny, it's supposedly it's a town, but it's smaller than Chelmsford and Pisa, it's a village, and it has a railway station, which Chelmsford and Pisa doesn't. Um, but like I said, it's like it's all one settlement, and um, so it's, you could say it's a bit like living in one big town that does have a railway station, and um, Chelmsford and Pisa is just the furthest part away from it, but um, on paper, Chelmsford and Pisa is a village, George Cross is a town. So, um, that kind of almost concludes the um, largest town, sorry, largest village in Buckinghamshire without a railway station. Future episodes will be um, on, probably on towns. By the way, if you are getting off, getting on the bus to go back to Shelvin Speed, you get on it just there. Um, I'll show you where you'd get off the bus as if you had come from Chalfon St Peter in a moment and um, it's over by the infamous Tesco so um, I don't know how often I'm going to do this it won't be all the time It'll just be from time to time just if I'm in the area really if I'm in the largest town in whatever county it doesn't have a railway station then I'll make a video if I'm near there um, Maybe if I'm in the second largest town that doesn't have a railway station, then I might do a video on that for the sake of it. But, um, you know, it's just an occasional series I'm going to do from time to time. That's Tesco's over there. So you'd get off a bus there to walk down this slope to get on the train. That's if you were to come up here by bus, you know, to get to the railway station. So um, I'll just let you see over there. That is the mouth of the um, infamous... Tesco tunnel which um, collapsed when they were constructing it but if you want to know about that then have a look at the link on stream now because that's another video I did last year called Charles Cross a walk back in time where um, that's all explained and basically the history of Charles Cross so coming down the slope not getting on a train I really would like to I've not been on a train since the 1st of November last year there's the tunnel, but you know, it's for the right reasons. And um, once we eventually move away from lockdown, then videos on trains will become a regular part um, of my videos. Again, probably though, before I go on the mainline train, I'll probably end up going on a miniature railway because they are starting to open up. So, probably in the next couple of weeks or so, I will go and visit a miniature railway. Um, and um, as I can travel around a bit more, perhaps I'll do a few more old railways, you know, castles, the lot, the lot that um, Henry's Adventures normally is, will all soon be back. But um, as a sign of things to come, well, there's Charles Cross Station, just there. So, um, hope you enjoyed this, um, like I said, it's a bit of a pilot episode um, of a series I'm going to do. And by the way, Charles Cross Station looks a bit different at the moment, because it's been having a new roof. Um, so, yeah, Jarrah's Cross Station, looking different. And if you were to do this journey by bike, then that's the way that it says 10 minutes. And it quite optimistically says 20 minutes to Chalmers and Giles, although I suppose if you went along Grove Lane on a bike, you could get there in 20 minutes. I've never done that, though. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this video from outside Jarrah's Cross Station, starting in Chalmers St Peter, the largest village in Buckinghamshire without a railway station. Uh, please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And um, from the slope, the slope that takes you away from Jarrah's Cross Station, goodbye.